Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the world of the ROG Ally X, the latest from the brand that continues to take pride of place even with other powerful releases, such as the Onyx Flyphone Pro. The great truth is that the ROG Ally X is capable of competing with and even surpassing today's best devices. So let me tell you how that's possible. But first, I need to show you its highlights. So today we're going to be looking at benchmarks, testing popular games, evaluating emulation capabilities, and other things like temperature and battery life. So come with me. It keeps the base of the ROG Ally, but expands the amount of memory, refines its design, finally removes the proprietary port to offer a second that will allow you to change the battery for no other power source. Plus, five years of industry-leading advances to ship competitors, add technologies on top of that battery to ensure more time away before needing to be recharged. Other elements are retained, such as the processor, the IPS screen with 120Hz refresh rate, as well as LEDs in the analog area. So this device looks ready to take on the most demanding games on the market. But does it really deliver what it promises? That's what we're going to find out today. Despite not upgrading the heart of the device, which is the AMD Zone Extreme chip, the ROG Ally X does have significant hardware upgrades. The first is memory. Both RAM and storage have been upgraded. The SSD now has one terabyte, something that wasn't so crucial in the original ROG Ally, as you could easily upgrade this aspect of the laptop. But it's one less thing to worry about, which is always welcome. The other is more important. The RAM has been expanded to 24 gigabytes. This means that you can keep 16 gigabytes for the system and still have eight left over for the graphics chip. It wasn't unfeasible yet, but it's starting to get tight having 16 gigabytes to deal with CPU and GPU in more recent games. Another improvement is in memory speed, which has been expanded from 6,400 mega transfers to 7,500. It's nothing that will change performance dramatically, but faster memory is always welcome by the graphics chip. However, it could translate into better overall performance and the ability to handle more demanding games. We'll see more about the impact of this change in practice later in the video. Having tinkered with the structure of the portable console, Asus has taken advantage of the trip and made improvements to the design as a whole. The first change is to the controls, where the buttons and analog sticks have been repositioned to a more natural diagonal based on the angle of the thumbs. Another welcome change is that the company has ditched its proprietary connection and we now have two USB type E's available, making it possible to connect an external dock and an iGPU, for example. The last relevant change for consumers is on the inside. In restructuring the laptop to fit a battery, Asus has readjusted the space for the SSD which no longer needs to be the compact 2230 type, but can now be the more conventional 2280. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if I say M2 SSD, you may have imagined a 2280. Compared at a glance with the original ROG Ally, the improvements are remarkable. In addition to the increase in RAM, the ROG Ally X has also received an upgrade in storage. The cooling system has also been improved, with ROG's zero-gravity design, which uses dual fans to keep the device cool and quiet, even during intense gaming sessions. Having said all that, let's take a look at the benchmark tests they've done. I'll try not to be too boring here, so don't skip. We start with synthetic benchmarks, such as Cinebench, to measure the processor's performance in both single-thread and multi-thread. We observed a variation of just 1%, with the previous ROG Ally being 1% faster, this difference is expected within the margin of error between products that are essentially the same, with performance similar to that of the desktop core i5. However, the most relevant comparison is with devices such as the Steam Deck, which was running Windows 11. It's important to note that when we mention the Steam Deck, 
we indicate when the test is carried out on Windows 11, especially in applications that don't run on the Steam OS. At other times, if the operating system is not indicated, it means that Steam Deck is operating on its native system, Steam OS. When comparing the performance per thread between these two models, we noticed a big difference. When all threads are activated, performance is practically the same, with the Rogue Ally showing results similar to the desktop Core 5, and both the Rogue Ally and the Rogue Ally X showing almost identical performance, with a variation of just 1%, again within the margin of error. The ROG also stood out outperforming the Ryzen 7, as well as outperforming the Ryzen 5, both desktop models. The Steam Deck, on the other hand, did not perform satisfactorily in Cinebench, possibly due to issues related to the operating system and drivers. When analyzing gaming performance, we found a 5% difference between the ROG Ally and the ROG Ally X, favoring the ROG Ally. Variations of around 5% are acceptable for products with similar configurations. It's possible that the ROG Ally's slightly larger cooling system contributed to this difference, as the Counter-Strike test in HD mode is basically a processor test and is GPU light, which often leads to a CPU performance limit. The ROG Ally X's performance mode, which operates at 17 watts, showed a variation of only 7% compared to normal mode, and the Steam Deck showed a significant difference, falling 36% short of the ROG Ally. Therefore, we noticed a wide variation in performance between what the Steam Deck can offer and what the Rogue Ally provides in this game, with a tie situation when the Rogue Ally is placed in power saving mode at 13 watts. In the Assassin's Greed test, the Rogue Ally X came out ahead with a 5% performance advantage, operating in balanced mode at 17 watts, which resulted in a 26% performance loss compared to normal mode. The difference with the Steam Deck is considerable, indicating that this console's hardware is slightly older than the zone extreme of the ROG models. When the graphics quality is increased to full HD at medium settings, the ROG Ally X's advantage increases to 7%, although this doesn't significantly alter the experience between the two consoles, with only a 3 FPS difference in practice. When you put the ROG Ally in power saving mode, the difference in performance reduces to 13%. So, between having an average of 46 FPS and 40 FPS, it seems more advantageous to have 40 FPS and a longer battery life, which will be discussed later. Compared to Steam Deck, the difference is 28% with Steam Deck managing to maintain an average close to 30 frames. In the Red Dead Redemption test, in HD at minimum quality, performance proved to be more dependent on the processor than the GPU. Raga Alley again came out ahead of Raga Alley X with a variation of 5%. The difference between 65 frames and 62 frames is imperceptible. Steam Deck also did well, running the game around 10% faster on Steam OS than on Windows, probably due to the use of the Vulkan API, which behaves better on Valve's Linux system. By increasing the graphics quality to Full HD, the ROG Ally X took the lead, with a 5% margin of advantage. Thus, both devices performed closely within the margin of error. The Steam Deck was around 17% lower than the ROG Ally X. Cyberpunk was the game where we saw the biggest difference between the ROG Ally and the ROG Ally X. In the low quality HD test, using the FSR and Ultra Performance mode, the ROG Ally X was 11% faster than the ROG Ally, possibly due to the faster memories. This was the only time we noticed this significant difference. In balance mode at 17 watts, the ROG Ally X lost virtually no performance compared to performance mode. In contrast, Steam Deck showed a significant difference, operating at around 40% fewer frames. When we look at ROG Ally X's highest performance mode, 
The difference with Steam Deck is around 40% in terms of performance. These tests allow us to conclude that the ROG Ally X offers an excellent balance between power and energy efficiency, excelling especially in more demanding games and benefiting from the fast memories in titles such as Cyberpunk. Since we've talked a lot about Windows and the Steam system, let me comment on a few things now. The touchscreen can be used to navigate, but it's very inefficient. What makes up for this is Armory Create, which has a much more user-friendly interface and helps you navigate directly to the games or to the app stores. Speaking of which, apart from Steam and its big picture mode, all the others are very difficult to navigate with a gamepad, unfortunately. Despite this disadvantage, many prefer the ROG Ally with Windows and its entire ecosystem of applications to the Steam Deck and its limitations of games that don't yet run on it or even other software that you might want to use, especially if you're going to use it as a conventional PC, on a dock, for example. Well, there's no point in being so powerful and having good software if the battery doesn't work, and that's what we're going to talk about now. Battery life is ASUS's priority when redesigning the ROG Ally X, so we're going to devote a set of tests to showing how much this aspect changes in the video game. Starting with the maximum autonomy test, when we put the device on low power consumption and ran the PC Mark 10 test in office mode, which only does light activities, we got this result. It's quite impressive to see that the ROG Ally X comes close to the ZenBook based on Meteor Lake technology. Compared to the previous ROG Ally, double the battery gave basically double the autonomy. But the critical point isn't light use. The ROG Ally managed more than eight hours in this scenario. The problem is that games consume a lot of energy. So we ran the test in PC Mark 10's gaming mode which loops a 3D rendering. They tested the three power modes of the ROG Ally X compared to the ROG Ally in its three modes too. We got a 100% increase in battery life in a lot of the time. In performance mode, the increase is still a respectable 80%. And finally, in performance mode, we get 100% more battery life. In the most economical mode, the increase is more discreet but still 50% more battery life in light games. This increase in autonomy is very significant. Even in a heavy game and in the highest performance mode, the Ally X still holds two hours of gameplay. Very good considering that the Ally only holds one hour. In balanced mode, which still runs many games, the battery life rises to three hours. Needless to say, the ROAG Ally X shows exceptional performance in both modern games and emulation, outperforming its predecessor in all areas tested. This positions it as one of the most powerful portable devices on the market today, capable of offering high-quality gaming experiences across a wide range of titles. After going through all the other factors we've shown you in the review, one of the most important ones to define whether it's worth it is missing what about the price? The ROG Ally X is more expensive at around $300 or $400 depending on when you watch this video. You won't spend half that if you want to upgrade the SSD yourself, so you're paying extra for the battery and upgrades to the connections in design. In my opinion, this upgrade is worth it. In practice, you can unload the ROG Ally quite quickly. The Auto Ally X will last a considerably longer time, so you'll be able to use it for longer when you're traveling or on the move, and you won't have to look for a power outlet all the time. So, if you can afford the investment and you want this portable PC, I think it makes sense. So I'll end here and hope it was useful. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and see you in the next video. Leave a like if you can. See you later.